welcome back let's just begin with a word of prayer um would someone be willing to open the class with prayer let's pray heavenly father we just once again thank you for this uh, time of study we commit this time into thy hands and we pray father that uh, let thy word minister to us father as we get into your word and we pray that we will not only be able to retain whatever we learned today but be able to apply the same in our lives we also pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and all the students father of the of our college and we ask all of this lord jesus in thy precious name amen Okay, thank you. So um, let's just continue uh, in the book of John. So we're doing the outline of the book of John. Uh, we stopped at John 10, right, uh, last week. So we'll continue from John 11 with Sam. Yeah. Um, so John chapter 11, uh, it's the famous chapter on Jesus raising uh, Lazarus and uh so we we see that lazarus is very sick um and his sisters uh mary and martha sent word to jesus um uh, telling him that you know lazarus is sick but interestingly jesus uh didn't come right away and um uh you know and then by the time jesus arrived uh, lazarus has been already dead in the tomb for four days uh, and we also see this uh, conversation uh, where Martha comes to meet Jesus and said, only if you had come earlier, he her brother wouldn't have died. And um, But she still had faith that Jesus could do something um, in that conversation. And uh, so Jesus asked to see where Lazarus was laid. And uh, when he saw the tomb, uh, you know, we encountered the shortest verse in the Bible. It says Jesus wept, which really shows the relationship that Jesus had with Lazarus and his sisters. Um, so then he asked for the stone to be uh, stone's entrance to be removed, and uh, you know, you know, Martha is concerned that you know why are you telling why are you telling us to remove the stone uh, because there would be um, it's already been four days, uh, but Jesus assured her. Uh, that if she believed she would see the glory of God. And um, then once the stone has been removed, Jesus then called out with a loud voice uh, saying, Lazarus, come out. And to, you know, uh, and Lazarus who was dead uh, came out of the tomb still wrapped in his burial clothes and Jesus told to unwrap him. And so we see this miracle of uh, Jesus raising Lazarus up from the dead who was dead for four days. And uh, we we really see an am amazement in the crowd. Um, you know, some of the, it, it reinforced uh, some of them uh, of their faith in Jesus. Uh, you know, for, for the crowds who are following him, but some of them also went and told the told the chief priests about uh, you know this miracle, and they really got angered. And we really see one of the first instances in the Gospel of John where there is an intentional plot to kill Jesus from this miracle. So, uh, you know, it is from this miracle where really the plot to kill Jesus intensifies uh, from, from this moment. Um, so they, uh, you know, so the, the chapter really summarizes the, the miracle power of Jesus's resurrection power over death uh, by raising Lazarus from the dead. And also we see that through this miracle that the chief priests start plotting to kill Jesus. And that's kind of like the summary of uh, John chapter 11. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we'll go to John 12, Sanjay. Yes, Pastor. So uh, John chapter 12, the summary of John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, uh, we see where Mary anoints Jesus. So. In the town of Bethany, Jesus is invited for dinner when uh, Mary anoints uh, Jesus with some expensive perfume. 
um, verses 9 to 11 is, is, is a plot to kill Lazarus. So some of the Jews conspired to kill Lazarus, who was raised from the dead, because many Jews had become followers of Jesus on account of the testimony of Lazarus. Uh, verses 12 to 19 is uh, talks about Jesus' triumphal entry. Here, Jesus comes riding on a donkey into Jerusalem, where he is greeted with palm branches and people shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed is the King of Israel. So in verses 20 to 36 is where Jesus predicts his death. So Jesus tells his disciples, this is one of his quotes, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Uh, he then narrates what is about to take place so that God's redemptive plan for mankind could be fulfilled. Uh, coming to verses 37 to 50, is, is more about belief and unbelief. So although Jesus had performed so many signs in the presence of the Jews, they still did not believe in him. To this, Jesus quoted from the book of Isaiah, sorry, to this, Jesus quoted from the book of Isaiah saying, the Lord has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Jesus also said, whoever believes in me does not believe in me alone, but in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one believes in me should remain in darkness. So this is just a, a summary of uh, John chapter 12. Thank you, Sanjay. Um... John 13, Shekhar. Okay. Uh, I'll just cover that chapter. Uh, so John 13, uh, we have the account of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Uh, now, as we... Uh, discussed earlier this is unique to John's gospel he's the only one who records this um, and uh, we see that Jesus knew what was coming her head he knew that uh, the hour had come for him to leave this world so uh, that it was time for his betrayal it was time for his crucifixion he also knew that he was returning to the father uh, and uh, that he would uh, be once again in his place of authority and so he uh, does this act of service through his disciples um, as the last thing before uh, they head out after uh, after this they have their meal and then they go out and Jesus is betrayed so um, he washes the disciples feet and uh, we know the conversation with Peter where Peter doesn't want him to wash his feet but then uh, he then says you can have no part of me unless you wash and then uh, Peter says then wash me completely but uh, Jesus says you are clean so you don't need to be washed completely but one of you is not clean so he starts to then point to uh, the fact that Judas is going to betray him uh, he then washes his feet and he says this is something uh, that they are to continue doing uh, he said I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Uh, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Um, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Um, and so he instructs his disciples to continue to have that heart uh, of a servant towards those they are leading. Um, he then talks about his betrayal. And here uh, in John's Gospel, we actually have John asking Jesus, who is it who's going to betray you? And Jesus says, the person who takes the bread, uh, who I give this bread to, and then he gives it to Judas. So uh, he's actually telling John that uh, Judas is the one who's going to betray him. But uh, the, it isn't clear here if John understands that or not. Um, and then uh, as soon as Judas takes, uh, we have this in verse 30, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Um, so we know that John uses that picture of light and darkness throughout uh, the gospel. 
and here he uses it again. Judas went out, and it was night. Uh, it was time. Uh, uh, it was a time of darkness. Jesus talks about his ministry as a time of light. He said, darkness is soon coming. Uh, and so we see that it has come to that point where the darkness is setting in. Um, Jesus then uh, tells them that it's time for him to be glorified. And uh, he tells them that they should love one another. Uh, this is where um, he he says that uh, I'm going somewhere. You cannot follow me, but you will follow later. Uh, and uh, Peter says, we'll follow you even to death. And then Jesus tells him, uh, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So um, that's the end of chapter 13. Uh, chapter 14 is Warren here. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> so, um, so following from chapter uh, uh 13 uh the chapter 14 starts with uh, jesus saying let let not your heart be troubled you believe in god believe also in me so basically here uh the the, the disciples have just found out that uh J jesus is uh has announced that someone will betray him and then uh, peter will deny him and also that he's going somewhere and uh, so they are left in a bit of a trouble situation they uh, not certain what Jesus is actually meaning by all this and what the future holds for them. Uh, then uh, Jesus goes to say that uh, in my father's house there are many mansions. So basically, uh, uh, he's, he's wherever where he's going, he's going to prepare a place for all the uh, for all his disciples. Just sort of reassuring them that he's not leaving them and he's uh, you know uh, he's he's going to prepare something where he will take them to the place he's going. Uh, and then he also says that he will come and uh, receive. He says, I, "I will come and receive you myself uh, to take him to the, to take them to the place where he's going." Uh, then, uh, of course, then Thomas says to him, "You know, says that we don't know, do not know where you're going." So, and that then that's where. And how can we know uh, the way? That's when uh, Jesus says that one of the famous uh, uh, seven I am's, which is, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me." uh and uh so then uh he also makes the statement that if you know if you uh, if, if you had known me you would have known the father and also he says that uh so because now you've seen uh me you, you've seen the father and philip says you know show us the father and this just goes to show that uh you know the, the disciples didn't actually still did not understand that jesus was god uh you know they, they still didn't have that complete the uh, belief uh then uh, jesus yeah yeah there he goes to say have i been with you so long yet you have not known me uh and we go on to the the uh yeah he basically jesus goes on to show that uh he the father I am the Father, and the Father is in me. Basically, he says uh, that uh, believe believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and and also believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So, if you cannot believe that I am uh, the Father, and the Father is in me, and believe because of the works that I've done, the miracles that I've done, uh, and then and he goes on to say that this is a promise to what we have been uh, given that whatever you ask in my name. I will do. And he also goes on to say that if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then the next part from John 4, uh, John verse 15, he he goes on to uh, say that if you love me, keep my commandments. John, and this is where Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know, I will, I will uh, send you, give you another helper that he will abide in you forever. Um, and yeah, I think just do. Yeah, Jesus basically says, you know, he who has my commandments keeps them, and and he who loves me. Uh, so giving us a, a commandment to keep his commandments so that we can love him and love the Father. And uh, I think yeah, basically in, in summary, it, it starts with Jesus talking about 
he, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then the second part where Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Warren. Um, Yarusha, uh, on John 15, are you able to cover that? Uh, Yarusha, are you there or if you're not able to, then I'll just do it. Okay, I'll, um, yeah, I'll just cover John 15. So, John 15 uh, is uh, Jesus teaching on the vine and the branches. All of us are familiar with it. Uh, so, the main thing is that Jesus is. Uh, the vine, we are the branches that we have to remain connected to Jesus to bear fruit. Uh, and if we are uh, cut off from him, we cannot bear fruit. Um, and then uh, he uh, also teaches them about obeying his commandments. So uh, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Uh, and then he commands them to love each other as he has loved them. Uh, following his example of laying down his life for them. Um, and then uh, the chapter ends with Jesus uh, talking about the world hating his disciples. So just as they've hated me, uh, they will hate you also because they do not know you just as they did not know me. Uh, and uh, it ends with the promise of the Holy Spirit coming. Uh, who will testify about Jesus, and then he also commands them that you also uh, testify me because uh, testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning. Um, so that's the end of John 15, John 16. Uh, bless you. John 16, uh, the starting five verses is also like four verses. It's a continuation of uh, John 15. Uh, Jesus, he just warns about the persecution uh, they will face. Uh, he'll tell about the, the things what are uh, going to happen in future uh, for, for his disciples in both worlds uh, also. But these things I have told you that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. So he just wa uh, gives the warning what is going to happen in the future about persecution and all. And then from verse 5 to uh, 15, uh, Jesus introduces about like, uh, he just tell about the Holy Spirit and the work of Holy Spirit, what he does, uh, what he'll do, his role, uh, everything. Uh, in 8th verse, he'll mention that when he has come, he will convict the world of the sin and the righteousness and of judgment. He just uh, give the explanation of about the Holy Spirit and works. And then from verse 16 to uh, verse 24, uh, Jesus tell about the uh, the sorrows we should face and the sorrows will turn into the joy, uh, how it will turn. And also he will tell a little while and you will not see me. And again a little while you will see me because I go to the Father. He'll just uh, tell his word words to the disciples the, the correct meaning they, they may not understand the disciple they they don't understand the meaning but he'll uh, tell like most assuredly i'll say to you that you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful but your sorrow will be turned into the joy so and then uh, finally to, uh, from verse 25 to 33 uh he jesus uh, tell about that the Christ he has overcome the world uh, the, whatever uh, maybe we persecution we may face but he just tell uh, he will give that the courage that he has overcome the world that's it thank you uh, thank you John so uh, John 17 is Pankaj here Okay, I don't think so. 
um okay so john 17 uh, this is jesus's prayer which is uh, actually uh, really beautiful prayer he prays for the disciples uh, so we know that jesus after being raised from the dead uh, is now before the father as an intercessor right for us uh, but here we see a prayer for the disciples before he is crucified so uh, he prays for very specific things for the disciples and all those who will believe on account of their testimony uh, that means he's prayed for all of us in this prayer um, so he prays uh, for unity specifically and that through uh, this unity and through this love that uh, his disciples will witness to who he is, um, will be a witness for who he is. Uh, and then he uh, also tells them that I'm sending you out just as I have been sent. Uh, so, uh, and then he says, I sanctify myself that they may be truly sanctified. So uh, Jesus himself goes through that suffering and sacrifice for the sake of the disciples' sanctification. Um, he then sends them out and he says, uh, he ends the chapter with, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them that I myself may be in them. Uh, so just this conclusion of uh, the love of the Father being in the Son, being given to his disciples and for his disciples to be the ones who carry that love to uh, the world um, as a witness for who Christ is. Um, so that is John 17, John 18, uh, Sabita. John, John chapter 18, here uh, is talking about Jesus, Michel and Aristotle, and here mention one, John chapter 18, 1 to, one to 11, here, here, here represented, Jesus was, uh, Jesus was arrested before in the garden when they went to uh, went to ask Jesus. Jesus was Jesus was full of power when when Jesus was asking them whom you are seeking, and they say to him, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, after that, uh, he was saying, "I am." When he was saying, "I am," the after that, uh, suddenly they fell down and tear. So he had mentioned how uh, he was a full of power at the time. I don't know what is it, uh, but I think this is the glory of God. And he had mentioned uh, 12, 12 to 14, Jesus faced Ananas and Caiaphas. They took, uh, they took before uh, Ananas and Caiaphas. And 15 to 18, Peter denies Jesus. And 19 to 24, the high feast questioned Jesus. And 25 to 27, Peter, Jesus, uh, Peter denied Jesus again. And 28 to 32, Jesus before Pilate. And here, 30, 33 to 40, uh, when, when Pilate was asking to Jesus, are you a king of Jews? And he was telling, my kingdom is not for this world. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sabita. Uh, John 19, Sugat. John chapter 19, 
is talking about uh, journey of uh, the death of Jesus. One 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 verse to sixteen verse in Jesus come, Jesus is condemned to the crucifix and ninety to seventy. He talking about Jesus uh, carrying his uh, cross of logos and uh, eighteen to twenty four. Jesus is crucified and Jesus uh, and Jesus speak to his mother and the disciple to Lord and twenty eight to thirty. He talking about Jesus death on the cross. And thirty-one, thirty-one to thirty-seven, Jesus said is preached, and last it is uh, thirty-eight to forty-two, talking about Jesus is burned in the tomb. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Sugat. John twenty, Akka. Uh, John twenty basically uh, talks about you know the, what the events that unfolded after the resurrection. So it starts off with you know Mary visiting the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark. So as she visits the tomb, she sees that you know the people are uh, the tomb uh, tombstone is actually moved across, and as it is moved across, she panics, thinking that where they have taken the body of Jesus, and then she runs back to uh, Peter. And uh, John emphasizes that the other disciple whom Jesus loved. So she goes and shares that you know the stone has been rolled away and they have taken the body. So as they hear that, uh, Simon Peter runs, uh, you know, to see the tomb himself. Along with him, parallelly, John also runs. So what here? Uh, uh, the small emphasis is that you know where John uh, lays out the, 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 the Jesus did love all the disciples equally. But it is John's revelation of how much he is loved, which actually that's what the entire passage of John's gospel we see that you know the disciple whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved. So he had more revelation of you know drawing the love from the Father than uh, giving it. So then he runs ahead of Peter and reaches the tomb first, and then he sees the tomb empty. So as they see the tomb empty, uh, he sees the uh, cloth which was there. And he doesn't go further in, but by, uh, Simon Peter goes inside and sees uh, not only the cloth, even the kerchief also was folded by itself. And they believe what uh, Mary Magdalene says, and then they quietly go back to their places. But Mary Magdalene, from there, she goes ahead and she continues to stay back at the tomb, and she's weeping. So as she's weeping, she sees two angels. Uh, Seated at the head and the foot of Jesus, where he was laid, and they ask her, "Where? Uh, why are you crying?" And uh, in response to that, she says, "The body of Jesus, which was laid, it's no longer here." And again, she hears another voice, "Woman, why are you crying? Whom are you seeking for?" Then she assumes it is the gardener, and she says, uh, "Sir, if you have seen where the body of Jesus is, or if you know, please let me know." But then Jesus says, "Mary." So at this very second, he he she understands it's the voice, it's the recognition, and then she turns back and then she sees Master Raboni, as in uh, Raboni translated to Master, wherein she knows it is the Master who's actually ca calling her out, and then she wants to cling on to him, but Jesus says, "Please don't cling on to me because I have to be ascended to my uh, Father and your Father, my God and your God, and go and tell my brethren what you have seen." So she runs back and she narrates the same thing to uh, John and uh, Peter and the disciples. So as they hear that, they are uh, overjoyed. But they go to the in the same evening later on, as they are seated in the closed doors because of the fear of the Jews, uh, Jesus appears to them in flesh. It's not in spirit. So he appears to them and he shows them his wounds and he uh, uh, the sight. And then they see and they are overjoyed. At the same time, Jesus says peace. And he also breathes on them, and then they ask him to he uh, ask them to get the Holy Spirit. And uh, after that, uh, during that uh, encounter, Jesus also gives a great com a commission wherein he says, "Forgive others the sins, just like uh, you have been forgiven. If you don't forgive, they remain unforgiven." And uh, having said that, all the other disciples are there, but uh, one disciple who is missing at that point of time is Thomas. 
so when the other disciples go and narrate the entire episode to thomas thomas doesn't believe he says uh, i i would want to see in person i would want to touch and see and then i will believe so jesus again appears uh, to thomas and he gives him his hand he shows him his nail pierced hand and the body thomas touches and then believes but here jesus emphasizes blessed are people who do not see and believe you have seen and you have believed so that's the narrative of thing and the uh, passage also concludes by saying there are many other signs that jesus also did in that which is not recorded in this book and blessed are people who believe so that they will have uh, life so that's the entire summary one thing that you can actually draw from this passage is about how uh, jesus appeared to the woman it's not to the men who appeared first or she alone though the disciples stayed with jesus it was the woman who went first before the disciples as it was early in the morning and also about you know the faith where a christian faith emphasizes more on seeing uh, uh, believing first and then you you know see the result unlike you know you see and then you believe where jesus says blessed are you if you believe before you see so that's a summary of today thank you akar okay so we've come to the last chapter john 21 um so this is post jesus's resurrection again this is a unique story to the gospel of john we don't see this in the other gospels uh, so the disciples are out catching fish and uh, jesus uh, goes to them and he's walking on the shore and he calls to them and he asks them uh, have they caught anything uh and uh they say no so he says throw your net on the other side and they catch a large number of fish uh when they throw their uh net on the other side uh this is when um again the disciple whom jesus loves so john uh recognizes that it's jesus and he says it's the lord and immediately peter uh jumps out of the boat and goes uh to the shore uh to meet jesus uh jesus then makes breakfast for the disciples so it's a, a very uh, it's like a very normal kind of like jesus has just died and has been raised from the dead but then we see a very uh, intimate kind of setting with his disciples where he's uh, just enjoying that fellowship and communion with them uh, and uh, serves them this breakfast um and uh, it's at this time that jesus uh, reinstates peter so after peter's denial of jesus three times uh, jesus now asks him three times do you love me and each time peter affirms uh, that he loves jesus jesus says then feed my sheep uh, so it's based on his love for jesus that he is sent out to take care of uh, Jesus's people right uh, the followers of Jesus um and then Jesus also predicts uh, Peter's death uh, that uh, Peter the way in which Peter will die uh, at the same time P uh, also is this whole thing of uh, Peter asking he sees John and he says what about him and uh, Jesus says why are you worried about him uh, you follow me right uh what does it matter to you if he lives until i come back and so there was a rumor that spread that john would uh live uh, uh would not die uh but uh john himself writes here but this is not what jesus said uh what jesus said is if i want him to remain un alive until i return what is that to you um and with that it ends it says that this is the same disciple who has written this testimony uh and uh, again jesus did many other things but not everything can be recorded uh we would not have room for all the books that would be written if we tried to record everything that jesus did and that's how uh john ends his gospel uh just to say that i've tried to cover as much as i can but uh there's much much more that i have not covered uh so um we will uh we have about 10 minutes okay we'll try and do this i wanted to just uh break us up into groups and do a small group discussion on these four topics um so we can just read the topics i've mentioned here what i'm asking uh, what i want you to do 
uh, look at the meaning of these four words. What does John's Gospel say about it? It's all in your textbook. Uh, so you all can read the verses attached to it. And what does the rest of Scripture uh, how does the rest of scripture provide further understanding on this topic? Uh, so you all can discuss this and um, maybe we'll end class with that discussion. Uh, if you would like to post something from your discussion from your group, uh, you can do that. So I would suggest that you all just pick one of the topics. I thought each group could do one topic. Uh, so maybe here in class, we can do incarnation and born again. And I'll break you all up into two groups uh, in Google Classroom. And you all can do one group can do love, uh, and one group can do obedience. OK, so uh, I'll end the, um, end the breakout rooms in 10 minutes. So that will be the end of class. Uh, if you all can post something in the Google Classroom based on your discussion, that would be great. OK, so I'll just start the breakout rooms. I'll mention your topic on your breakout room so you know which topic to discuss. In class, you all can just divide into two groups and choose one of the topics.